Now, many poor South Africans have little or no access to clean drinking water and sanitation. Now, to that end, um, water has been rolled out across South Africa to communities in need, especially as washing one's hands and practicing good hygiene is the first priority in fighting COVID-19. Um, 41,000 water tankers have been procured to provide water to communities in need and to tell us how that rollout is going and to talk about de-densifying uh, areas. I'm joined via Skype by Water and Sanitation Minister Lindiwe Sisulu. Minister, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, when uh, this virus, um, the pandemic started and the uh, disaster was declared by the president some three weeks ago, um, you obviously moved really quickly because we needed to get water to people so that they could wash their hands. Give us a tally out of the 41,000 tankers that you've procured, how many have been delivered to communities in need? Okay, um, we've, we've actually procured, it's muted, it's muted. No, Minister, we can hear you, it's fine, you can continue talking. Okay, we've, we've, we've bought more than 40,000 uh, Karima. Uh, and uh, but what we have in store is 41,000, and out of that 41,000, we've delivered 40,000 across the country. 40. Uh, the rest are still coming in because we've tried to buy out the entire stock of what is available in the country, so that we will continue delivering until we are certain that uh, uh, we are able to indicate to the country that for every so many kilometers there is water available for anybody in the area. Mm -hmm. Now, in the different provinces, Minister, when you spoke um, on one of the radio stations, uh, we had 83, um, or 834 rather, water tankers in the Eastern Cape, 344 in the Free State and 370 in Gauteng, and only 34 in the Northwest. Let's start with uh, the 34 in the Northwest. Is that still the amount or is more water available? No, we, it's changed drastically. It changes as a... Minister, you can continue. Okay. I say it changes on a daily basis, Karima. At the time that we released the first statistics, we were releasing them real time. And the reason why some provinces were behind with, uh, you know, in the delivery was for various reasons. One of those reasons is, particularly in the Northern Cape, mm. the manufacturers are very far from the Northern Cape. We were buying them direct from the manufacturers. So they were delivering them to the nearest um, municipality as we had uh, put out coordinates. But in the Northern Cape, you don't have much activity around the production of these tanks. So we had to buy them from the nearest area and send them to, um, to the Northern Cape. So that one was uh, quite behind. But the others, we were satisfied with the spread because this is, these are the areas that were identified by the municipality as most in need of uh, that kind of intervention which is water tanks. Now, given the fact that the president has now extended the lockdown to another 14 days, are you satisfied, Minister, that um, all South Africans now have access to water and can practice that very basic um, first step, which is washing your hands for 20 seconds under running water with soap? Mm -hmm. But we're satisfied that as many South Africans as is possible have, have got... Uh, soap and water to wash their hands. But as we indicated, we want to make sure that we bring this water as close as possible. We have now de uh, delivered 20,000 uh, tanks, as I have indicated. But we've also experienced some delay in putting, putting the tanks up on a platform because mm. they've got to be on a platform where it's possible for people to put a pail or a bucket under, under the, the tap to open the tap. This we depend on the municipalities to do. And uh, we have discovered um, something that we in one of the hardware shops were uh, defined as essential services. We've now spoken to Minister Patel, Minister Kosazana Zuma and I have spoken to Minister Patel and he has indicated he is going to relax that regulation. Okay, so, so, so the I, hardware shops will be... 
So if I understand you correctly, Minister, you're saying that Minister Patel is about to relax the regulations so that hardware stores who can uh, give the infrastructure so that these tanks can be um, elevated on planks um, can now yes. operate. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. And when will this happen, Minister? How soon? Well, he, well, well, we spoke to him last week. Because we are working on a 24-hour basis, I would assume that as soon as that was conveyed to him, he, uh, he um, ensured that the regulations were changed. Uh, but so this week we are hoping to install many more tanks, and we will keep track and we'll keep informing communities of the nearest tank to them. But we have stock to provide the whole of South Africa. We just need to make sure that we get to where they are needed most. And we have done that now. The surplus will be there to be given out, and we're hoping that we can keep them there for the duration of the Okay, Minister, one of the things that um, communities the have been... Minister, we're just having a little bit of a technical problem. I'm just going to come in here quickly. I hope you can hear me. Um, one of the things that people have been complaining about is that local municipalities, like in places like Kailicha, in Mitchell's Plain, we've had a situation where water has actually been cut off as a result of non-payment. You've come out on the record um, insisting that uh, this is not the time to punish communities that are late with payments. Um, given that this is a concurrent power, what kind of of, um, control can you exercise uh, in cases where municipalities have acted, like in the case of the city of Cape Town, where you can reverse uh, this decision? Is this um, um, allowed in law as it stands? Well, fortunately, we have declared a, a state of national disaster. This means that everything that needs to be done anywhere in the country is concentrated. It's decided upon in what we call the National Command Council. It consists of the ministers responsible for this. It consists of the president. Everybody else, whatever province it is, follows the direction and the line that we give them. Therefore, we expect that the city of Cape Town would have been immediately informed and would have immediately ensured that water does get to the taps of all the inhabitants that, that get water from the city of Cape Town. That water at the moment is mine. We have centralized control. Now, that sounds very... But it belongs to national uh, uh, d department, and therefore all the water that we have in South Africa will flow into the areas where we need water most, and it is under the central control of the National Command Center. Now, does this, sent does this include um, municipalities who claim that they're not cutting off water, but what they're in effect having, Minister, is trickle systems where people are able to use very minimal water. Surely um, that should also change. One should have water coming out of the taps and not trickle uh, systems that they do when people are in arrears. No, they don't have the right right now. A letter has been sent to them that in, in this period of um, uh, national disaster, we would have to put aside any of the debts that anybody has because we have to concentrate on what is the most important thing for people to protect themselves against COVID. So the state stands responsible if at any point the city of Cape Town would like the money that is owed in this period uh, given to them, we will consider that. But we have sent them a letter. They will not close down or trickle down anything. We just hope that the citizens of Cape Town will use water wisely. We hope that the citizens of this country will use water wisely. All right. Otherwise, the municipality has a right. Absolutely. We're going to take a, a short break. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Water and Sanitation Minister Lindy Wesisulu. Uh, stay with us.